The University of Phoenix is sponsoring uh, a documentary tonight on TV One uh, that deals, explores the issue of innovative ways to improve K through 12 education for black students. That includes looking at overly aggressive discipline, uh, of course, which we talked about a little bit earlier in the show, increasing the numbers of black teachers and using technology and popular culture to reach and teach students. The documentary is called Saving Tomorrow Today, the Curriculum of New America uh, airs this evening and here's a sneak peek. The children who are entering college now, they don't know a world without the internet. This is a group of young people for whom their primary reading won't be left to right, but it'll be up and down. We need to use digital technologies to engage families. Why aren't we live streaming some of these events? Why aren't we using Skype for parent-teacher meetings? You know, why aren't we FaceTiming for stuff? We still putting notes in kids' book bags to right. tell them to tell their parents stuff. Right. We need to develop a way of thinking and accessing knowledge that is linked to the new ways that people engage tools like technology. The higher I was going in school, the less I would see people who looked like me and were from my hood. By thinking about things through lyrics, I was able to make connections to the ideas. But a lot of folks who come from where we come from don't know that just by being who you are means that you're automatically dope. Folks, we're joined right now by Byron Jones, CFO of the University of Phoenix, Charles Davis III, host of the documentary and director of higher education research at the University of Pennsylvania Center for the Study of Race and Equity in Education, plus Gabriel Asheru Ben. Is that it? Yes, sir. All right. Founder of the Hip Hop Education Literacy Program. Folks, welcome. Uh, it, I'm going to start this way. It's interesting because uh, a lot of folks don't realize that uh, the KIPP school, uh, the origin of that school was the fact that uh, one of the co-founders uh, heard uh, a teacher across the hallway uh, and the kids were singing and the kids were, she was using music to teach. Uh, and it was watching that display where he really got the idea of how, how, to, how to teach kids differently. And that's actually what has led to uh, all the different KIPP schools. Uh, and that, so it was a black woman who came up with that particular concept. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it made sense. I mean, music, popular culture being the voice of the youth. It's an easy segue, an easy uh, jump off point to introduce everything from math to social studies to science, et cetera. So, you know, we're, just, we're using popular culture, hip hop as a springboard to have these larger conversations that usually don't take place in a classroom. But is the problem here that you have uh, folks from on high, whether it's legislators, uh, then uh, school boards, then superintendents, and then principals, sort of mandating how education is to be taught, which is really still operating off of agricultural system, mm. as opposed to, wait a minute, use different ways to, to reach a kid versus this is the only way. But the, the essence of the issue is that we don't have the right level of parent-teacher involvement going on in the classroom, especially in the black community. That was the purpose. That was one of the pieces of the documentary, that we want to reinvigorate our community schools. And so, Roland, it's hard to say that when new legislation come out from Washington and it rains down on the school, what actually happens when it gets to the doors of the or school? Or even state capitals. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely, right. absolutely, right. or the state capitals. So in the new legislation from the Department of Education, it will turn more power back to the local governments. So parents have to be more involved. The, the local legislators have to be more involved to ensure that the funding is properly equal across the school. That's gonna be really important as we move into next year. Talk about um, the, how people need to understand, because I've always made this perfectly clear. Every child doesn't learn the same. There's no one particular way. Right. Uh, some children are auditory learners. I mean, my, my wife and I, we raised six of my nieces, and it was interesting because uh, two of my nieces were they learned totally different than the other four. Uh, uh, I had a couple who absolutely, they wanted to read everything. Others, they heard it differently. And if you don't encourage innovation in the classroom, uh, really, uh, you're not affecting the children in a unique way and getting them uh, advanced in education. Sure, well, I think that that's the cautionary note when we're thinking about something like innovative teaching practices, one that every student does learn differently and that you can't just pick up one model from one school in one context and put it into place in your classroom if you don't already have a meaningful connection. So when we're thinking about something like hip hop education, well, if you're not connected to the historical legacy, you don't understand the sensibilities, then it's gonna be very hard to create lesson plans that relate to kids in the ways in which they see the world. But how do we then get get um, administrators, teachers to understand, not, not teachers, because teachers are, are sitting there saying, hey, 
I know of a different way. I know how to reach this kid, right. but you guys are, uh, you got, I got handcuffs on, I got shackles on. Right. Uh, and so how do we encourage folks who are watching, who are listening, uh, or even if they're administrators or officials to say, look, unlock that potential that's sitting right there. So again, it's very basic in my mind, and I may oversimplify it. Having parental involvement on in what happens in the classroom is key. Parents don't have to be expert around educational or the techniques of education. So curriculum development, understanding what your child is learning in school, how you force it is through the community and through the parents being involved. And I was talking to a gentleman earlier today where we see very little involvement for parents for, uh, for the success of their students in the class. Teachers can teach teachers can um, use a parent as an extension of as a resource. Absolutely. And so and, and it involved curriculum involved uh, in development that we can have for schools also. So we can't just, you know, take out that equation of a parent's being involved in a, in the child's life. There has to be a partnership between mm -hmm. the school and the, and the family and the, and the home community. Um, you know, parents, community members, mentors, uh, brothers, sisters, uncles, we are all advocates for our children. We need to do better jobs of advocating for them in the school spaces and, and letting schools know that we are interested. We do want to know how our child is doing and we are watching what the schools are doing because right now schools are, like we talked about earlier, schools are, are monitoring and penalizing students for being innovative, for being creative in the classroom. And it's, what it's really doing is dimming their light and, and going against is counterintuitive to what we're doing as parents to raise them. So, you know, we have to work in tandem with schools and not be confrontational, but actually work together for the best interests of our children. This is also a problem when you have removed the creative aspect out of schools anyway. Right. Absolutely. Because look, I mean, I was in band in elementary school. And so when you when you're removing when you're removing those classes, removing band, music, mm -hmm. drama, Right. Those are, I mean, those are the classes where you use your creative side right. versus your analytical side. Yeah, right. and one of the points that we make in the film, right, is that these are the things that make us more human, that develop us as full human beings. And so when we're thinking about high stakes testing, we think about the policy that's really driven about math and reading, which are very much important, that focusing only on those things do not allow us to be, uh, you know, full human beings, right? And that if we can't have access to things that, whether it's through hip hop or whether it's through literature that represents our voice and for people that look like us, uh, that we're not really developing uh, fully as the way that we need to for people that eventually will go into making some of these policy decisions, right? And we do see that uh, very much now, that we need to have those human sensibilities as we grow and become, you know, policymakers in this space. Folks, Saving Tomorrow Today, the Curriculum of New America, uh, sponsored by the University of Phoenix, airs this evening, 5.30 p.m. Eastern on TV One. For more information, visit uh, Saving uh, Tomorrow today.com. Uh, Byron, Gabriel, and Charles, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thanks, Thank you. Thank Folks, you. kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.